As much as you hear about the explosive nature of space, between supernovas giving birth to entire galaxies, and black holes sucking everything and anything into its enigmatic core, the truth is that across most of the universe, all is quiet on the cosmic front. Of course, with the infinite nature of the universe, there can't be total inaction across all sectors of space. Surely somewhere out there, an event of awe-inspiring power must be occurring. While they may not happen that often, such events do exist, in the form of absolute space-shattering, energy-flourishing explosions called gamma-ray bursts. They are the most energy-potent events to occur since the one and only Big Bang, and emit the brightest light any event throughout the universe can conjure. Whether they are a couple dozen milliseconds long, or a multi-hour affair, gamma-ray bursts pose to be one of the most terrifying, if not electrifying, happenings in space leaving behind an afterglow of any wavelength you can think of. Whether it's X-ray, ultraviolet, optical, infrared, microwave, or radio. They've only been studied for about 55 years now, making their mystery all the more fascinating, worthy of a deeper dive into the royalty of superluminous explosions, known as gamma-ray bursts. In the latter half of the 1960s, the United States and Russia, then known as the Soviet Union, were at the height of the space race, ten years into a war to see who could explore the cosmos and reach the moon before the other. The conflict was much more than moon landings and space travels, however. The Cold War and years of political strife were burning brighter and faster than ever. Weapons of mass destruction were taking away the attention of both countries, and everyone was fearful of an impending missile launch it wasn't just concerned citizens at the mercy of the unknown arms race. Astronomers were working towards the same goal as political leaders, using the space race funding and focus to spy on Soviet activity and get a heads up on potential nuclear deception. Thus the United States built and launched the Vela satellites, special space probes sent into the atmosphere as part of a Project Vela to detect gamma radiation pulses given off by nuclear weapons tested by Soviet operatives. In July of 1967, astronomers serendipitously unlocked their biggest discovery yet, but it wasn't a super-secret Soviet missile launched under the cloak of night. Rather, the Vela satellites detected a brilliant flash of gamma radiation at 2.19 UTC time on July 2nd than any missiles. The gamma radiation came at the surprise of all the astronomers studying the Vela project, but none of them seemed particularly worried that these bursts could be signs of imminent danger. Instead, the scientists simply recorded their observation, sent it to the Los Alamos National Laboratory, an old US Department of Energy lab meant for nuclear weapons testing during World War II. Over the next six years, Astronomers kept in mind the gamma radiation of July 2nd, 1967, and sent out further Vela satellites to collect more data. Over this time, the space probes detected 16 bursts that did not fit with their original nuclear tracking data, and calculated these events were of neither terrestrial nor solar origin. The earliest theories centered on the random bursts of gamma radiation posited that because the distribution of gamma-ray bursts were isotropic, they could not originate within the Milky Way. Isotropic means the gamma-ray bursts were not bound to any specific direction going through space, and if they did come from our home galaxy, they would be highly concentrated on a galactic plane. While it did serve as the dominating theory in 1991, it cannot be concluded with 100% certainty, as the Milky Way galaxy has since been found to contain secluded pockets of isotropic space. Research into the gamma-ray question continued over the next 30 years, as astronomers slowly learned more about their frequency and purpose in the universe. In 1997, an event labelled Big Bang 2, technically known as Gamma-ray Burst 971214, startled scientists with potentially the brightest, most explosive event recorded in human history since the birth of the universe. 
while it came from a galaxy located approximately 12 billion light years from Earth. Featuring a redshift measurement of 3.42, its calculated energy produced in half a minute was hundreds of times more powerful than the total energy given off by our solar system's Sun in its 10 billion year existence. Years later, after closer inspections of the Big Bang 2 event, it was realised the energy levels couldn't have been as high as originally thought, due to the energy from the gamma ray burst only getting beamed in certain directions, rather than an even disbursement. The discovery may have been a letdown for some, but it gave scientists a better look into gamma ray bursts and how they are visible only if a beam reaches an observational point on Earth. It also meant gamma ray bursts are visible to hundreds of other points in space, as long as their energy beams are directed at one. It was mind-blowing to think about gamma ray bursts with this new information, as there are probably hundreds, if not thousands, of gamma ray burst events occurring all around the universe that we simply cannot see, making space a much more explosive and radiation-rich place. The most recent development came in October of 2018, when data from two gravitational events in 2017 came in and revealed the possibility of gamma ray bursts occurring at the collision of either two neutron stars, or a neutron star and a black hole. These events, called killer novas, were once thought to be ultra-rare events throughout the universe, but with the dual-recorded events happening so close within host galaxies, killer novas are now believed to occur much more frequently. A similar happening came a year later, in 2019, when a gamma-ray burst gave off the highest energy reading of its kind in recorded astronomical history. These unparalleled events of massive radiation levels have helped astronomers learn more about wavelengths, the death of stars, and the properties of gamma in the universe for a mere half-century, meaning our current understanding of them is just the tip of the iceberg. Like many celestial properties across the universe, gamma ray bursts are unique to the point where no two gamma ray burst events are alike. Some gamma ray bursts are milliseconds long, where others are minutes, stretching towards hours. Some gamma ray bursts feature a single peak in its brightness, while others have subpulses, wavering in brightness and fading speeds. There are even gamma ray bursts with a foretelling signature, such as a very weak burst followed by the main event itself, whereas other events simply happen out of nowhere. To build a more concise model of these types of gamma ray bursts, astronomers categorize gamma ray bursts into three classifications to help fellow scientists and gamma ray enthusiasts better understand what each burst entails. Gamma ray bursts with durations less than two seconds are called short gamma ray bursts. Short gamma ray bursts rarely come with an afterglow and make up nearly 30% of all gamma ray burst events, due to the location of many short gamma ray bursts in areas with hardly any star formation in large elliptical galaxies. Short gamma ray bursts are events unrelated to massive stars or supernovae, but are most likely related to kilonova. Neutron stars swallowing or colliding with a black hole happen at lightning quick speeds, but do not release longer durations of X-ray flashes post-event peak. It would explain why some short gamma ray bursts show up in areas of the universe without stars, as the black hole would have eliminated the events area prior to the kilonova. Gamma ray burst events lasting longer than two seconds are appropriately called long gamma ray bursts. Long gamma ray bursts are the most common gamma event, accounting for almost 70% of these radiation bursts. Due to their higher frequency of occurrence and vibrant, elongated afterglows, Long gamma ray bursts are the most studied of the three types, and nearly every single one under observation has been linked to supernovas and the deaths of stars in galaxies featuring high-speed star formations. Gamma ray bursts lasting longer than 10,000 seconds are called ultra-long gamma ray bursts, and are the rarest of the three events. Ultra-long gamma ray bursts originate from the death of gargantuan stars, like blue supergiants, or the birth of intensely magnetized neutron stars, called magnetars. Ultra-long gamma-ray bursts have been a challenge to study, not only because of their rarity across galaxies, 
but because of their lower sensitivity readings for measurements we have the technology to detect. With an advancement in technological sciences, ultra-long gamma-ray bursts will be better understood, as will their points of origin. Even though there are no recorded incidents of gamma-ray bursts happening close enough to Earth to make an impact, could it be that some time long ago, in the vast history of our planet, a gamma-ray burst destroyed some, if not all, of life that once covered the world? While there isn't much leftover proof or observational evidence to confirm, many astronomers and historians alike ponder if gamma-ray bursts closer to Earth happen once every five million years using modern-day data if it's true, it makes you wonder how close we are to the next incident. Even if gamma-ray bursts don't occur as frequently in Earth's vicinity, there is a viable theory that a gamma-ray burst was the cause of the major Ordovician Silurian extinction events dating back 450 million years ago. The Ordovician Silurian extinction events, also called the Late Ordovician Mass Extinction, or LOME for short, occurred at the end of the Ordovician period, and is the second largest extinction event in Earth's history, wiping out an estimated 85% of all living marine species and 50% of all fauna. These species included corals, bryozoans, trilobites, and echinoderms, and various species of plankton. While they were multicellular beings, they did not yet resemble a lot of the modern-day aquatic life we are used to seeing, However, what remains from the period tells us a lot about what propelled such a cataclysmic event. By the late Ordovician period, the aforementioned trilobites lived in the top layers of the oceanic bodies, where plankton flourished and fed other organisms. These spread out colonies of one of the most prolific living organisms on Earth were some of the hardest hit by the extinction event, rather than the organisms that lived deep within the ocean's depths where even light made rare appearances. In most extinction events, the opposite happens. Spread out families of organisms survive, whereas the smaller clusters of creatures are first to go. This would explain why so many of the newly discovered species in the darkest parts of our ocean, like the Marianas Trench, feature prehistoric attributes and look like they are of periods from millions of years ago. This type of pattern would suggest a potential gamma-ray incident the deep depth trilobites would have been protected by countless layers of the ocean, whereas the trilobites near the surface would succumb to the UV radiation and lack of an ozone layer. The same can be said for bivalvia. Species of bivalves that burrow in the ocean floor survived the late Ordovician mass extinction, but the surface ridden bivalves met the same fate as their trilobite neighbours. No other hypothetical extinction event has resulted with such a unique loss of life. And while a gamma-ray burst isn't the only explanation, it would also make sense of the drastically colder climate that followed due to a blockage of light. While a theoretical gamma-ray burst event in the past gives us plenty of mysteries to solve, a gamma-ray burst event close to Earth in the future wouldn't be just a simple astronomical exercise but rather could prove to be the most terrifying, apocalyptic event we may ever see. If Earth is ever near a local gamma-ray burst direction beam, there is simply nothing we can do to protect us from likely extinction. First and foremost, the death and destruction brought upon by a gamma-ray burst event wouldn't be the initial explosion itself, but rather the lingering effects. And while the ground-level ozone layer wouldn't evaporate, the upper levels of the ozone layer would slowly disappear due to an increase in nitrogen oxide and nitrogen dioxide gas due to chemical reactions of oxygen and nitrogen. These effects would continue for multiple years, with an estimated 75-100% to of the ozone depleted in certain areas around the world. In addition, the higher levels of nitrogen oxide would build up in the atmosphere and create dense layers of smog. Smog so thick, that certain rays on the sunlight spectrum would be unable to penetrate to our ground level on Earth. This would not only have detrimental side effects on photosynthesis, but would also cool the Earth enough to create an event called cosmic winter, where global temperatures drop far enough 
to allow a buildup of dust and aerosols across continents, making breathing the natural air violently dangerous for both mammals and humans. Worst of all, the nitrogen dioxide levels would lead to nitric acid building up in the lower atmosphere, forming toxic clouds and dumping acid rain across the planet. Nitric acid is toxic to most living organisms, including humans, known for causing decay and irritation to the skin and eyes. It would make living on Earth unbearably painful, and in combination with the intense levels of radiation above the crust, humans would likely develop cancerous defects, if not already dead, due to being unable to breathe in the first place. While the prospect of vibrant, ultra-luminous explosions across the deepest parts of the universe are awe-inspiring to imagine, let's hope they stay out in the great beyond. It's fascinating to think such volatile events exist, but like so many things in our universe, it's only one of the many mysteries still not quite fully solved throughout the cosmos. And if it means avoiding incomprehensible levels of radiation on Earth, it may be better if it stayed that way. Thanks for joining us for this week's Access Astronomy. We hope to see you here next week, where we will explore more of our infinite universe.